join our players here. This is the semifinals of this week's EPT Cup Americas, and that means we're on the European server, spawning in the lower left-hand corner of Alcyone. We have Team Liquid's Clem looking strong after getting to the finals of Europe. Not quite able to take it there against Rainer, but trying to go for it in this one. No Rainer for him to worry about. In the upper right-hand corner, though, first, he's got to get by one of the strongest Protosses left in his bracket. His Team Liquid's Skillis just came off a victory over Hero. And, guys, if you wouldn't mind hitting that follow button on the Twitch channel if you're new to the channel, hitting that subscribe button on the YouTube channel, trying to bump up those subscriber numbers, hoping I can get to 1,000 subscribers where... Uh, Maybe I can monetize my YouTube channel and make, like, $2. Maybe maybe up to 3 a month. That'd be sick. We are getting some stuttering here. That is really annoying. Ping is pretty high right now. Hopefully, hoping it it falls. I wasn't really having any issues earlier on Europe, so hope hopefully it's just a temporary thing. Uh, everything looks okay for now. But so far, it looks like a pretty standard macro game out of these guys. We have a Reaper expand out of Clem. Uh, Zealot first here out of Skillis. He's gonna try to send the Zelly across the map. Maybe be annoying with it. We have no bets on Clem right now. A thousand nuggies on Skillis and nothing on Clem? Nobody wants to put their nugs down. Nobody believes in the kid. I love this Reaper. Playing Ring Around the Rosie with a Zealot. Oh, the Zealot is too close to the tower to let the Reaper take the tower. That's actually so funny. The Reaper does have the grenade though. It could drop the grenade there. But instead it's just gonna run away once the Adept gets there. That's, that's so funny. The positioning of the Zealot is so cool. That's such a cute little thing. Meanwhile, the Adept is coming across the map. The SCV a little scared goes hides in the corner. Double Cyclone coming out for Clem. Interesting choice. Skillis in the meantime getting into a Stargate. Uh, the adept, the adept ran away. Doesn't want to get killed by the alien, so it leaves. Zealot still holding strong at this this tower. So Clem can't see the zealot. Okay, he still can't see it. How does that work? Look at. It's just, like, invisible there. And Skillis can hold the watchtower from that. That's so sick. It feels like it shouldn't be a thing, but it, it, it's hilarious. Is upon us. Hellions decide to back up. They've taken a little bit of damage already. Skillis with a few adepts here to threaten them. And a Phoenix actually looking for maybe a medevac if these Hellions decide to pick up. A well, Reaper comes back over. Finally, this will get cleared. A Zealot goes down. Can't survive against everything, I guess. Oh, but the, Hel the uh, Hellions aren't going in the Metavags. It's the double Cyclone follow-up that's going in the Metavags. The Cyclones are going to pop out to show themselves against the Adepts. The Adepts and Phoenix is coming home to defend. I think uh, there should be enough here for Skillis to hold on. Club's going to have to be a little careful against the triple... Phoenix here. And Medivac won't last super long against that. But the Phoenix has already taken some big damage. The Reaper and Hellion are going to help out against the ground army as well. Uplift the Cyclones, but they're going to have to drop back down to actually fight this, but then they both get lifted. Another Cyclone does show up, but these two Cyclones are going to fall. Ooh, the hot pickup for Clem. How does he get that? And he drops back to another two Cyclones. They all will get lifted, but then only the Stalker can do damage, which means they're all going to fall back down. And at least two of them should be able to get saved. Ooh, man, it's dicey. Clem boosting out of there. 
He's gonna have to drop the Cyclones. Ooh, one gets caught in the medevac. Two more Cyclones show up to help out. Yeah, this is this is a wild back and forth. So far, Skillis has traded better, but he's gotta be careful. Good scan there, gonna allow those Cyclones to take another kill. Skillis, I don't know if he has very many lifts left. It looks like he just has the one at the moment. He's just gonna pull back, grab his third base. Third CC is done for Clem, starting to morph into an Orbital. So Clem actually way ahead in terms of the third base. After pressuring with those Cyclones. Two more Cyclones on the way, and in fact, a second factory. In fact, Uri. Huh? In fact? Oh man, a third factory, Clem. He's giving us the good stuff. That's hot. That's hot. Beautiful. Viking and two Cyclones here. There's a couple Marines and three Cyclones here. Triple lock-on or double lock-on, I guess. Pushing those Phoenixes away for now. Phoenix is going to try to come back in or maybe just keeping an eye on things. Seeing what's what. More Phoenix is being made. And then, of course, Colossi coming out behind this. I don't think Skillis fully realizes how many Cyclones have been committed to yet. Maybe now. Now that he sees two more and even two more coming out. Phoenixes can't lift that many Cyclones. There are seven Phoenixes and eight Cyclones. Cyclone upgrade on the way, as is plus one on the armory. Actually, does does that help the Cyclones? Does the lock-on benefit from that upgrade? I don't know, but we're about to find out if Skills has enough to clear this. And the answer is, yeah, absolutely. And he kills a bunch of those Cyclones, lifts this one up on the retreat as well. The Immortal and the Colossus here doing a lot of damage, as are the Stalkers. And this Cyclone ploy out of Clem, I don't know how well it's going to work. He has killed most of the Phoenixes, so I feel like Skills needs to be a little bit careful here. More Cyclones are popping out. That upgrade is almost finished. Scan sees the army is not there. Skills decides to just take a fourth base, and oh my god, he drops the Fleet Beacon and a second Stargate. That's crazy. That's actually insane. And Clem's just going Mass Cyclone. Let's see if Mass Cyclone works against Protoss. I have seen some builds like this, but I have not seen it in a match of this high level before. That's for sure. Colossi can outrange these Cyclones. That's a big benefit to them. Wouldn't hate to see a Disruptor out either. Try to shove these away. This Clem's going to start busting his way through the wall. Oh, Clem going to hit on the left side after drawing the army to the right. The Observer's going to see this in time for Skills to start to move back, but the Natural will be a little bit exposed here. Clem going for it? No, he's not going to go for it. Can't go for it. Just pulls in, pulls out. Sending more Cyclones into this base now. There's a Shield Battery here. That's a massive lock onto that Immortal, though. Overcharge is not even going to save it. Oh my god, these Cyclones doing crazy damage to the Protoss. Moves in up here as well, forcing the army to stay over here, but that's exposing this base right now. But a carrier pops out, and suddenly Clem realizes he's up against carriers. And that's gotta be a, a weird feeling all of a sudden. Uh, how did the Cyclones do against Interceptors? I feel like they're doing fine against them. Oh, the Immortal though, chunking through the rest of those. 16 probes died during all of that. Clem up to 84 workers, and look at this. While we're on Skillis' side of the map, with all of this pressure, Clem is taking two bases. Oh, and he's gonna dive forward on top of this. He has a bunch of Vikings firing at the Colossi and the Carriers. Clem does pull back. Army supply, pretty similar here. More Carriers on the way. I don't think any of the Carriers have died just yet, which is a big deal. Because if that carrier count gets up to like seven or eight, Clem's gonna start to really struggle against it. The 
Cyclone's gonna hit down here now, finding some cannons. Looks like they'll kill one and then maybe just back up instead of sticking around to kill the other one. Ooh, they get it. Just barely they grab it. Vikings hanging out in the middle of the map with a few more Cyclones. Comes fifth base is finishing up. None of these are planetaries. He's just going full orbitals with this build. That's actually insane. The lack of planetaries feels insane. But skills doesn't really have anything to do like run buys with. So I guess Zelda run buys just aren't going to happen. I don't even think... He doesn't even have charge. Does he even have a Twilight Council? No. Who needs it? Robo into Sky Toss. I guess these guys decided to play Mech. This is Mech against Protoss Mech. And I love that they're doing it. Clem just non-stop production of Cyclones and Vikings right now. He's up to 28 Cyclones, 11 Vikings. He's hitting in multiple fronts. How are these Immortals going to do against this? The answer is not great, actually. With the multiple lock-ons to just the one Immortal at a time. Good micro there from Clem. Going to take the bolt down. And he's going to keep pressuring over here. Super Shield Battery turns on. Keeps that carrier alive. Just barely. So the Phoenixes with range are going to come out and help fight against this. Interceptors go down. More importantly though, Clem's going to kill that base. Straight up kill at the same time. He's expanding on location up here. So while Skillis is stuck on four bases, Clem is just going up to like 47 approximately i can't count this high you guys let me know how many bases that is clem has i'm gonna stick with 47 as a bunch of cyclones make their way into the natural base and oh my god the probes oh the probes 13 workers died just like that phoenix is coming in to clear this up but even a few phoenix is going to take damage in this cleanup they finally do finish those off Skill's going to retake this fifth base as Clem turns this one into another orbital. He's insane, dude. He's insane. I guess why build planetaries? And just scan for days and drop mules for years. He's got 94 SCVs. The Vikings kiting against the Phoenixes. There's no splash damage here to deal with the Phoenixes. The Cyclones just drive by. Carriers desperately trying to catch up to them. That's going to be a lot of dead probes. 10, 11, 15. Oh, my God. 17 probes going down while the uh, 21 Vikings start to bust through carriers, phoenixes, colossi. And it looks like the phoenixes might finally win this fight. I don't know. There's still 15 Vikings and it just doesn't matter. GG, man. It turns out uh, Cyclone Mech is better than Protoss Mech. Wow. What a game from Clem. That is insane. Just mass cyclone into mass cyclone Viking. Actually insane. Um, takes down the, the robo units, takes down the carriers, takes down the phoenixes. It looked a little dicey there for him right near the beginning with that push from Skillis. But Skillis not closing the deal, not continuing to push after losing his phoenixes. Clem just getting up to a huge army. And the players are ready. We're going to head into Hecate for game number two. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me for yawning. It's my mistake. Would never do that to you intentionally. It's just an accident. We hop into game number two. Whoa. Sometimes I hit that button by accident. Um, here in the upper right-hand corner of Hecate, we have Team Liquid's Clem. His opponent in the lower left. For Team Liquid, it's Skillis. These guys are teammates. Somehow I didn't realize that last game. My brain did not connect the dots. You know why? It's because they're not both... They don't both have liquid in their name. Actually, Skillis does. That's funny. Funny. But only on NA. On NA, he's liquid skill. But uh, on EU, he's just in the liquid clan. Whereas Clem 
is in the Mlem clan, very specifically, uh, but on Team Liquid. It's an important distinction. The Mlem clan, very uh, exclusive. I wish I could be in the Mlem clan. We'll be interested to see if Clem goes for another cheeky Cyclone play. I wouldn't hate to see it. I mean, I don't really like the new Cyclone. But part of the reason I was complaining about the new Cyclone earlier, and in general, one of the things I don't love about it, is that it feels like later on in the game it doesn't scale super well. But as we saw from Clem, you almost don't need it to scale super well because you could just make so many of them. Uh, but it does require that they start snowballing, right? Like Clem never dropped below like 12. He just always had more and more. And even when he was losing them, he was he would have more back at home than what he lost out on the map. And he would trade well enough where it made it okay. Sometimes I have seen Mass Cyclone and there comes that point where it's like, oh my God, you just lost 25 Cyclones. And now your opponent has a chance to move across while you're trying to build like five at a time, seven at a time. And they build quick, but yeah, it's about that momentum, about that snowballing that we saw happen in the last game where Clem just never really dropped below a certain amount once he was going with that macro. And the pressure never came off of his opponent. Skills never had a moment to chill. Never had a moment to chill us, you know? This game, Clem opening with a double Reaper and Hellion. Ooh, actually into two more Reapers and another Hellion. Gonna keep that pressure on. It's just Adept coming out of Skillis. These Reapers gonna show up and suddenly these Adept's gonna have a little bit of, a, of an issue here. One goes down, but another Adept shows up. Stalker's now on the way. And it is a blink opener from Skillis this game. A bit of a different opening. One Hellion goes down, one Reaper goes down, but second Hellion, there's still three Reapers here. That Adept is getting nice and low. Was trying to buy some time, but this probe line is now in some trouble. Uh-oh, we're in trouble. Reaper's coming around, gonna burst our bubble, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is, this is so, so bad. Ah. Uh, Game ending probe damage is what that is. GG gets called. I was not expecting that game to end so quickly. I don't think anybody was. But Clem gets in there with the Reapers and just hits. At the perfect time, Skill is not ready for that kind of Reaper Hellion opening. Just like that, he goes down. Skill is tapping out before the game even really gets going. Just knows that that's too many probes to lose against Clem. And Clem takes the 2-0 victory, an absolute banger game one, and a bit of a bop in game two.